TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador, and Marvin Goof, yo. And we're here to talk nerdy to you, as we have been for the last 13 years talking about comics, video games, movies, shows, all the nerd stuff, because we want to save you the time. We don't want you to waste your time. We want you to put your time into the best of the best, so we're willing to waste our time so you don't have to. Yep, and we're here to waste our time about the month of April. Because, you know, April showers bring May flowers, but we got to talk about the showers right now. Yeah, yes. So we're going to be covering Fallout, Invincible Season 2, Shogun, X-Men 97, The Bad Batch, which isn't over yet, and neither is X-Men, so yeah. this is not the end, this is not the last you'll hear about this. Rebel Moon Part 2, Knuckles, and I think there's there's some Star Trek Discovery in there. Yeah, we'll do so, some Discovery. And then just, uh, I guess, whatever else happened throughout the month, right, that we did and, and checked out. Cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's cover the big one, because it's the most important one. And it is probably the best one, Fallout. Yes. Yeah. I would agree entirely. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. So, I don't know about you guys, but I played Fallout 3. I absolutely fell in love with it. I haven't 100%ed it. I tried, but there's a lot in that game. It's hard. I'm now tempted to go back and 100% it because of this show. Instead, what I did, because I've heard bad things about Fallout 76. I know there's they've made improvements, but I'm still like, ah, I'm not a big multiplayer guy, so I'm, I'm not about it. And so I did try Fallout 4 after watching this on Game Pass, because I had Game Pass. Yeah, so that's my experience. And I did play some Fallout Shelter, which is just the hmm. online mobile game, oh, wow. like okay, when they yeah. released it way back uh, you when. You can get that on Switch, too. Oh, nice. Yeah, so for free? Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. So, but yeah, uh, that's my experience with Fallout. What about you guys? Um, I tried to play 3, wasn't my jam, and haven't gotten to 4 yet. I'm going to try that one out since it's on Game Pass. And they also just added the next-gen update, so it would be cool to see how sharp it looks compared to when it first came out. Mm -hmm. For me, it's been basically word of mouth, actually. I've never played a Fallout game, although I own the tabletop RPG book, oh, so nice. I, you know, I don't mind doing that. Uh, so I know a lot of it because of that book. So I, you know, not, I guess I'm almost a fresh person, almost. I'm probably the closest to that. If you keep them under your thumb, they'll never end up in the gutter. <laughs> Too bad, Pete. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Watch this. PJ! Here, sir. Coming, sir. Yes, sir. Woohoo! Strike Ola! Yeah! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it feels like it. it well, if you play it, it does. It, it's an RPG, so that's perfect for. A tabletop RPG, right? Like, it's perfect mm -hmm. for it. So so I feel like, yeah, you, you're pretty in it, especially if you played it, but at least if you've read it, so you know something. Yeah. So for me, going into it, like, immediately and, and just as it continued on, I was like, oh, my God, this is just like the games. And it made me want to get back into the games, which is why I played Fallout 4 afterwards. Love the story. It, it's so much of it just plays out exactly like the games was... It's just random, you come out of the vault, and you are, you're a fresh person, you don't know what it's like, especially the first time you play it, right? You have no clue, and you learn. It's a harsh world out there. It's crazy, <laughs> it's messed up, it's wild, it's a wasteland, and it's absolutely nuts. And then, like, even that, that one line where he's like, uh, thou must get sidetracked by stupid BS, you exactly. know? Exactly. Quagmire? Hey, uh, nobody's seen you in days. Hey, Peter. I've just been, uh... Checking out some of that internet porn. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just gonna go go and check my mail over there. You been lifting weights? Uh, no. And I was like, oh, oh my wow. god, yes. <laughs> like, that captures that game so well. But, like, the side quests are so great. And and even that whole thing, like, you, it's, 
You are you do have three characters. There's the one main character, uh, the lady that is in the Fallout shelter. You have the one guy that's in the Brotherhood of Steel, which is from Fallout Three. And then there's a lot of references to uh, Fallout New Vegas. Yes. And one of the factions Ooh. in New Vegas is in the game. The uh, the New California Republic. And I do believe the Brotherhood of Steel has a little bit in New Vegas too. I think they're one of the factions trying to control the city. Well, what I remember in New Vegas is that like there's these Romans and then there's the new California Republic. Mm -hmm. And they're I don't know, they both seem really messed up to me. So like when you're choosing which alliance you're kinda like they're both pretty awful. Whereas like in three, it seemed pretty fairly clear that like the Brotherhood of Steel were the good guys, but then watching this show, you're like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe they're not the good guys. Yeah. It's just everyone's messed up. It's just varying degrees in which one you want to ally with. I think that's one of the things I took away from this the most, is just how everyone on the surface is messed up in some form or fashion. No one is purely good in this, and I think that is that does make it a little interesting. And, and also shows how messed up vault is as well. Oh, dear oh, gracious vault Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that... Oh, wow. It spe and, and that speaks volumes to, like, what we have going on now, where it almost feels like an oligarchy in America, where you just have the rich ruling over the masses, you know, controlling our politicians, and... and you could imagine something like this because because of the way that it is now, right? Like, it's nuts. You're like, wow, maybe I should do something. I don't know what to do. Should I run for office? Yes. Should I build a suit of armor? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you're like, um... Uh, do I build a suit build of armor my own move vault? to Japan? Uh, yeah, right? I mean, mm. they, they did have a... Gundam that could move a little bit. Yes, that was epic. That. They finally retired it. But anyways, <laughs> oh. yeah, I was like, man, I really wish I could have gone before it was retired, but still, mm. even seeing videos was pretty epic. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> this show was epic, and there was so much, even like the visuals, I was like, oh, it's going to be look cheesy. Even like that gulper, like, yeah, there it wasn't like the best CGI I've ever seen, but as far as shows go, it was still pretty top-notch. What I also adored, because... I mean, I've never played the Fallout games, but I think everybody knows what the suit of power armor from Fallout looks like. And seeing real people in power armor, yes. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. That was, I loved a bit the fact that they made that choice. And, you know, it, it definitely gave it depth to me. It made it feel real when you actually have someone in a suit. Oh, for sure, for sure. But yeah, like I said, getting back to the characters... You, you, like I said, you have that, you have the girl that's from the Fallout shelter, from the vault, and then you have um, the ghoul, Walton yeah. Goggins, and he's kind of like a sheriff character, but, and then you have uh, the Brotherhood of Steel guy, and it's, like, you're, it was weird because, like, you're rooting for him, but he's kind of a dirtbag, but he's kind of good, but... And that's the thing, is you go, like, they're all varying degrees of bad, but when you look at everyone else they're dealing with, like, they're kind of the best of the bad. Like, especially her, like, she's naive, she's new, like, so she's she's most, the most pure person. You mm -hmm. definitely want her to reach her goal the most. And so that was a, so it was a great conclusion for her. And it was crazy, too, because even, even with that guy in the Brotherhood of Steel, how you see how certain people get pushed to power bec just because of the way that things work. Like, people elevate them. Like, we've seen that in our own politics. And it's crazy. And then, and even Walton Goggs, you're like, I want to see his story complete. Like, I want, I have to see at least a second season to see his story come full circle. And also, how is how are their stories going to affect his, too? Mm -hmm. Because that the ending of that's going to affect his in a huge way. It's just all kinds of crazy and all kinds of awesome and I absolutely loved it so much as as a hardcore... I, I mean, I'm not the most hardcore Fallout fan, but I do feel like I am. I, I do love it. I've played the games. And yeah, I have... I never finished Fallout New Vegas, but I, I, I had a good time playing that one. But yeah, so... And like I have the shirt. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the show. I, I can't wait to see more. They've, it's already gotten 
greenlit for a second it's season, right? Yeah. It's coming. It's yes. already been greenlit because they had such high viewership on the first one. So, and it's crazy because they put it all out in one thing, and it was such a great binger. I did not think I would be able to watch all this, especially because my wife's like, I can't believe you watch it without me. And I'm like, it's for the people. I have to do it for the people. I'm bigger than you. I'm higher in the food chain. Get in my belly. Come on. It was so good, and it was such a great binger. Oh, phenomenal. I, I, it's a must stream. It's a must see. That's our highest grade. Mediums like check it out, you know, and then pass. Of course, that's the worst. So, what do you guys give it? I give it a must see. Absolutely must see. What are you doing? Go watch it after this. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and play the games too. Because mm -hmm. if you have Amazon Prime Video, I think if you if you have a membership, I'm pretty sure you can get Fallout Three for free through Xbox or or through Microsoft. No, no, it's not through Microsoft. It's yeah. through their own gaming platform. Oh, is it? Yeah, they have the they have their own gaming platform where uh, you can like connect a controller to like a Bluetooth controller to a Fire TV or a Fire Stick. So PC, mm. and you can it's its own thing. Mm. It's its own platform. Okay. Yeah, and you can play it. Uh, you can play it through there. And Fallout seventy six. I know that was on there as well. I, I don't think, you think have Fallout to, 4 was on there. I think you have to subscribe to his different channel for that one. Okay. Because Luna, there's the games they give you that are for like the month for that come with the Prime subscription. And then they have different channels where you can pay monthly fees to get those type of games from those channels. Mm -hmm. But I did it the cheap way because I'm cheap, which is I just got Bing points through Microsoft. And then I bought a membership to Game Pass with those points. And so, because they have Fallout, they have, I think they have all those games on there for Game Pass. But I was like, Fallout 4 is the newest one. I, I had a good time playing Fallout 4 for the short time that I did. But it was a lot. I feel like I need to watch, like, maybe, like, some tips and tricks or walk through just to understand where I need to go next or, or what to do. Because they had a lot of, like, new building stuff. But anyway, go to the gas station. Yeah, I was at the gas station. Yeah. Um, the, so, yeah. the scene in the show is from Fallout 4. Because uh, you go to a gas station to get your dog in Fallout 4. Nice. Yeah, cool yeah, I did with the dog, so yeah, wow. great. And the dog is like the most useful ally <laughs> in that game. Because uh, when like the ghouls, the feral ghouls attack you, the dog will hold them down so you can shoot them. Mm. Nice. Yes, sir. So. I may have talked to someone who was giving me good strategy. Nice, dude, <laughs> nice. See, that's what, talk nerdy to me. That's why, that's why we exist. Let's move on to Invincible Season 2, Part 2, which I have to grab my little, it feels like a manual. It's this giant book right here, Invincible Ultimate Collection, Volume 4, which was my, my Bible for this season, so to speak, which is... I lost. I lost. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script. I read it after. I really wish I would have read it before the season because then I would have known what was coming and what was happening, but I didn't because I didn't know what was going to happen, so I didn't also I don't want to like go too far as well. But this covers pretty much everything that is in the season two part two right here. So this is the one that you want to get if you want to have that. And oh it's so good. Like it that's this show is so good because it follows the book so closely and anything that they don't they either change for the better right mm -hmm. like you're like oh that's funny that they turned this into a joke in the show when it was kind of like a thing they mentioned in the book you know mm -hmm. and so it was yeah it was it was really great we talked a little bit about, a little bit about it in the previous talk nerdy to me that we did which was so check that one out where we talked about that which like the starro or starmy or, mm -hmm. or not starmy but the starro thing the way that that ends even, we're going to get more of that. Like, there's going to be yeah. more. Mm -hmm. And it might be, like, world, planet, takeover type thing. We'll see. I don't know. Because I haven't read that far. I need to get the Volume 5 before the Season 3 comes out. But the cool part is the father might be coming back in to change things up. And change mm -hmm. the dynamics. Because uh, his buddy who... Uh, 
was trying to talk to them at first until he realized he went to the wrong planet and realized the Viltrumite Empire had already claimed there. He was trying to get uh, the main character to go uh, back with them so they could fight the Viltrumites because they were like, hey, a son of a Viltrumite is rebelling against the Viltrumites. He could help us in our battle for the Viltrumites. So that didn't work out. And then he found out more about what happened to his father. He's like, Let's let's find out where his father is, and maybe we can have his father help us. <laughs> Since his father is not 100% compliant with them, so he may be able to sway in who he's going to help. Right, and, and his dad tells him, he, I mean, we saw in this in the previous season, he said, Mark, read my books. And essentially, they are manuals to how to defeat the Viltrumites. They're fictional stories... But there's stories that he was on adventures on where he fought aliens and he fought people that were able to hurt him. Like So there's these weapons that they can use against in these techniques or whatever to use against Viltrumites. And so that's what Mark gives mm. to Alan, the alien, right? That's his name? Yeah, and who's, who's voiced by Seth Rogen. And he's just like so... It's like his voice is just... Now, I can't, like, read it without hearing his voice and hearing their voices because their voice, the voicing is so perfect that I'm like, now that's what I hear. It's kind of like when you watch X-Men, you're like, those are the voices I hear when I read the books now. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just like that with this, too. And it's so great. So, yeah, you see they're slowly building, like, these alliances, but then also they get knocked down. Like, there's that lady that shows up. And she's she threatens his girlfriend. Oh wow! And she's like, "I will pop her head like a pimple if you do not come with me." And you're like, "Oh my god!" Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then they have a little chat, but then they have to go. They go, and he has this. He has to fight this kaiju, and and that also is a test. Like, is she gonna help him? Is she not gonna help him? Because she's like, "Oh yeah, the Viltrumites are here to help. Like, we're trying to improve people's civilizations and stuff." Don't run. We are your friends. And so it's her trying to kind of convince him of that. The books are slightly different. You can tell that she's more, I, I don't know. It's just, it's different. And, and I've heard that they're like, how they're going to traverse this in the future is going to be weird because of what happens in the books. But I think they've already changed like her character enough and like her trajectory that it won't be an issue when they get to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, that was really crazy. And that was really interesting. And like you said, you have Alan, and he's, like, infiltrating that prison so that he can talk to Mark's dad, Omni-Man, and be like, hey, like, you need to get it together so that we can start this, like, revolution, sort of. And then all the while, the other son, the, the purple, like, um, insectoid son is growing super fast. That's the thing is that in the book, they reveal more than they have in the show, and mm. that makes me so jacked for the next season because I'm like... Oh my god, yes. And then even there's the personal stuff, right? Where like Mark is saying, What am I what am I doing wasting time in college? Like I have these abilities and we have a legit threat that's coming like within five years or less, mm -hmm. right? Of the where these Viltrumites are gonna show up on our doorstep and we're gonna have an all out war and am I gonna be ready? Are we gonna be ready? Mm -hmm. And how can I be ready and we be ready if I'm doing school all the while he can help take care of his brother and do all these other things, you know, and, and do more supering and improving himself and getting stronger instead of wasting time with school, which also affects his personal relationship with his girlfriend, all that stuff. Yeah. And then re goes to his other relationship that he's had since the beginning, which is uh, Eve. Eve, and then uh, I think the more interesting one is probably Rex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, because he's like, he was just a pompous douchebag. Uh-huh. Uh, but he's starting to kind of catch on and know where things really need to be. Like, he, he knows he doesn't have a shot with Eve, so he doesn't even try. But mm -hmm. he's still very helpful with for her. And he's also realized that he needs to help Mark out, too. Because it's like, well, if I don't help Mark out, we might all die. Right. So I'm going to... Do it in the best way that I can. Right, even that was like super crazy intense because so there was that alien invasion and then the what was like the snake squadron or whatever it was. Yeah. Which also once again a ripoff of the one from Marvel. And that was crazy how that happened, and then he got messed up, but then he kind of got improvements. So now he's 
Because I thought he was, a, like you said, he's making, he's he's improving as a character, but also, like, his abilities, his powers are leveling up, too, because now he has, like, actual blasts he can shoot. Like, before he used to just chuck, like, these little sticks and these little things and stuff, and it was cheesy and stupid. Now I'm like, okay, now he's kind of hardcore. He's, like, also kind of like an android, sort of, you know. But it, it is pretty cool, and it's pretty crazy. And the other part is that, what's his name? Angstrom Levy who they set up early in the in I think it was part 1 of season 2 yeah. and then in this one where it comes to fruition where he finally he attacks his his mom and Mark's mom and and the brother and then so Mark just goes off the handle and this guy's talking to himself oh, I'm so powerful blah 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 and he just demolishes him mm. and it's crazy because I feel like there is you can relate to that, and anyone, and anyone who's ever really like gotten into a fight, whether it's like with their siblings or in real life or whatever, or like, or in any situation where you've taken it too far, even if it's just verbally, you go like, "Oh man, I, I took it way too far," and and you see like how it messes him up. But it it's also kind of needed for his character because he needs to get to that point mentally of, if you don't do this with the Viltrumites, we are going to lose. Earth will lose. They, he will lose, that his family's, everyone, right? So I think that's just part of slowly getting him there. And so it, it was, there was some really powerful stuff in this, and I can't wait to see more based off the stuff that I've read and then what's to come. So I got to get volume five and read that before the next season comes out because I don't want to be like unprepared this time because it's, it's, it's more, I mean, it is more intense. Yeah, or, or the Asian guy feeling finding out who he really is right that was crazy too yeah that he's been like remade so many times just like that other uh kid that was taken by that that evil minion which that's i don't know if they're going to reveal that in the show too because they they did it different in the comics which is that guy hired him to work for them to make essentially like those robots like make a robot army for them to fight the viltrumite so i don't know if they're going to reveal that in the show or not because I don't think they've really hinted at it at all. Yeah. So it might be a big reveal surprise. Spoiler alert. But it's out there if you read if you read the books. But you'll forget by the time that comes. So don't worry about it. I'll um, probably forget it. I mean, I still haven't caught up to all this. Yeah, I know yeah. It's it's, it's phenomenal. Still seems like it's I know we spoiled well. a lot, and I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I got overexcited. My bad. But it's been such a good season. I just feel like I had to talk about it because it was kind of traumatic. So you're kind of like my my trauma buddies now, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it was it's so good and 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 yeah, can't wait for some more and and I think I've already heard that the next season's finished as far as the voice work. Yeah. So now, but hopefully that means that the animation won't take too long. Or you, I thought that they did animation first and then voice work. So there's, no, yeah. but it no. kind of depends on like I think that's more Japanese animation, right? No, Japanese a lot of times will do voice work first as oh, well. Oh, okay. It's just... Uh, when they translate it. When they bring it over, then the voice work has to go. Then they have to change the writing a little bit, and then the voice work. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but, that's But, like, confused. the animation is always going to be based off of what the lines are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, which there's some funny stuff in there, too, where he's like, yeah, we do some stuff with the kids. He went to a convention, and he's talking about, like, the tricks that they use. They're like, yeah, yeah, sometimes we just put a panel, you know, and nothing's really moving. You just, there's a lot of people, and we just have, but we have the, the screen moving, so you think it's moving, you know, or you see the back of someone's head. That's because we forgot to put in some dialogue, and so we added it, and then they do that same thing for that shot. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this show is so funny how it makes... And that's how the book is too, where it's constantly making fun of, it's constantly making fun of comics and superhero comics, and, and wow. making fun of the genre and everything like that. So it's kind of, it's not quite like Deadpool breaking the fourth wall, but it is like, it's it doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's what I love about it too. So yeah, for me, it's definitely a must see, must stream. Yeah, it's a must see, must stream for me as well. Catch up on it, like you like me. What yeah, are we you doing have here? to. Yeah. What, what am I doing here? I'm <laughs> Yeah. We're going yeah, to need to give you a tablet over there. So you just like... <laughs> All right. Now, another show that is finished for the month, and I think permanently finished from what I've heard, yeah. is Shogun well, that was on FX. Thing. Right. And so, yeah, based off of a book. And so I can't, I can't wait to get to, to bring this up again. But, yeah, Shogun, it's a series on FX, and... 
about feudal Japan. We talked about it in the previous podcast, so if you want to hear our part one, go check that out. This is part two, so we're going to move forward. Oh, it's been so good. Like, I know it's slow. Look, I know it's slow. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to bring it. If you don't like this show, sorry, but you're not intellectual enough. You like the... And that's okay. That's okay. Different strokes, different folks. But I'm just telling you, like, intellectuals, you like, you know, Japanese culture. You like other cultures. You want to learn about other stuff. You want to learn about history or uh, something that's based off a book. This is it. This is phenomenal. This is brilliant. I loved it. It was fantastic. It was so great. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. Like, because it's just... It's just them playing chess, right? Like, it's yeah. just with people's lives though but what's great is that the main dude's not he won't do it on a large scale he's like i don't want to sacrifice japan i don't want to sacrifice masses of people because that is japan right like japan is our people and i'm not going to sacrifice swaths of people for a war so that i can end up being the winner so he plays it out so geniusly that he uses his players and it sucks because they end up having to sacrifice their lives i'm not going to say who but they end up having to sacrifice their lives. And he, he just plays them because he's like, this is what this person's going to do. So I'm going to use these things that I know they're going to do this anyways. So I'm going to use this and use them for, for my little ploy. And it's it's so messed up and it's so brilliant. Yeah, the way he gets it so he's like, well, what I can do is I can turn the person that they don't expect against uh, the main guy leading everything. And when I turn that person, they're all gonna fall like dominoes and go, "What? No, we ain't. Do We're not doing this." Political economy. And then we can nice. just. <laughs> so basically, they're gonna go out to battle, and then suddenly an army that's not expected will go up behind them, and then they're just gonna be like, the other army's just gonna go join them, and then you get a surrender. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and which I will say that that finale was somewhat disappointing to me because I was expecting a giant battle, mm -hmm. and instead it was just like that where he said, "This is how it's going to play out, and this is what's going to happen." So they don't even show it, but they show like a it's like the vision of the future because mm -hmm. it does come to fruition yeah. or whatever. And, and he's like, "I'm going to become Shogun." Yeah, uh, but whole... it's in the name of peace, though, and that's yeah. what I loved about it. Is he goes, "I'm trying to sacrifice the the few." For the many. Yes. And that's what... And it's messed up because he uses people. But at the same time, these people are also kind of getting what they've always wanted. Right? Like, the characters that he allows them to do these things, it's like, they're doing what they would they wanted the whole way. Like, uh, Mariko, like, she ends up getting what she wanted. Yeah. You know? In the way she wanted. Right. And, which was epic. And, and was... I did not see coming. And it was so crazy. And I was like, Wow. And and it's emotional and it was and yeah it it was absolutely uh, it it was it's just so well done it's such a beautifully shot show and I'm like oh man it's so high quality the acting is top notch I love all the actors in this and it's so crazy it's just phenomenal to see see stuff like this man mm -hmm. to see like other cultures and then just other actors and stuff like you see like especially when they act in their own language right. And you're like, oh, wow, okay, this is like a whole different level we're seeing from them, right? Like, this is crazy. And it, it, was, it was just a really impressive uh, show all in all. Like I said, I was slightly disappointed with the conclusion because it was, it was built up and it was this slow build. And then, really, there was no great battle. But that was also part of the genius of it. It was alluded. And the main because guy. Because the main yes. guy talks about crimson sky mm. about this great battle he's going to do against osaka mm. but really he did it without ever anyone even noticing he did it well That's incredible. and even his, <laughs> his adversary right yeah. was like it's gonna be total war starting tomorrow or, you know whenever it happens total war and, and the adversary thinks he's got everything handled mm. and then he's gonna go to war battle and everyone's gonna turn on him so but yeah it, it was brilliant Really, when now reflecting back on that finale, I go, it really makes more sense that it would happen that way. Yeah. And it was brilliant that it happened that way. And so I have heard they're like that people kind of want a second season, but the people that have made the show, they're like, we have no intention. This was a one and done. There's not a sequel to the to the book. We're just going based off the book. 
so we have no intention of continuing this. This is it. It's one and done, and it's over. And I love stories that are like that, where it's like, hey, there is an end game, you know, and that's it. And we don't have, we don't intend on it going on forever or trying to milk it dry or anything like that. So this was this was well done. I will say though, I've also seen comparisons of this, and we got into it the other day about this. So I'm gonna rehash this just for the people, uh, <laughs> which is. People, I've, I think I saw this on IGN where they're like, they want, they're constantly, or all the big, you know, nerdy media sites are like, they're trying to compare it to Game of Thrones. And I was like, you can't compare this to Game of Thrones. It's feudal Japan, and it's like medieval-ish, you know, but fantasy. Game of Thrones is medieval-ish fantasy. You know what I mean? So, no, but that's what I'm saying is Game of Thrones is medieval fantasy. Like, this is... This is feudal Japan. Like, there's no, there's no fantasy at all. Like, there's this is somewhat Depends historically based, right? Like, uh, the samurai have always been looked at in a fantasy type way, mm -hmm. and even with the way people respect samurai and warlords, it's always been that way in Japan. But my argument is that people shouldn't be comparing this show to Game of Thrones. They should be comparing Game of Thrones to Lord of the Rings. That's more that's more appropriate for me. Even though they're movies that that one's a movie and one's a show, I just feel like it's because they're the similar genres that I also they're both books and I know Shogun's also a book, but that was yeah. only one book as far as I know. Mm. I mean, well, Lord of the Rings, but it was technically one book, but when it went to get published, uh, the publisher said Hell no, we're not gonna yeah, that's publish too much. It's <laughs> huge, but we'll do it in three parts. Well, yeah. we can do it in three parts for yeah, and that was after like one of the CEOs of the publishing company bent over backwards to get it done because uh, he got the company from his father while his father was running the company. He got to test read The Hobbit and really loved it, mm. and was the one that approved The Hobbit. Prince, so he was biased towards Tolkien. Well, okay. So he made it happen. Okay. And I guess nice. that works out, but I mean, I haven't even seen, again, Shogun. This is one of the ones that I haven't had a chance to watch, but just on initial reading, I would agree with you, Paul. Like, you should. There's This is. They're different. It feels like they're different. Well, yeah. Not, they're not going to compare Lord of the Rings with Game of Thrones for one main reason. Uh huh. You're Lord of Rings is better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're not going to compare something that you know doesn't stand a chance. Well, I mean, I would. It's tough to say that this is better because it's so different. But obviously, the way it ended. But it's one season. I once again, to me, I'm going. I, I'm like, you're you're not comparing apples to apples, right? You're you're comparing things that are completely well, different. The, the, so, the biggest difference was Game of Thrones was mostly planned out. The only problem is. It, the show went downhill once the books ran out. Mm -hmm. Shogun could stay good because it began and end with the book. That's right. why they're refraining from making a season two because they're like, no, we're not going to we, be Game of Thrones. <laughs> we're not going to try to write. We're not going to try to write a sequel to someone else's work that we're not going to build to match. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely. It's not going to work well. For right. Us. If we want to do that, we would have done an original story. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what they're thinking. Right, which we'll, we'll talk about original stories here in a minute. What's the grade? What's the grade? It's a must-see. Absolutely. It absolutely is a must-see. Like I said, this isn't for everyone. It's definitely for me. It's definitely for intellectuals. You love, you know, Japanese culture. You love learning about other stuff, you know. Uh, it's, it's and, and yeah. It's phenomenal. Must see. Must stream for sure. Taking it to heart. Gotta do it. Yes. More stuff. I gotta catch up. We're gonna continue our talk about X Men once again. This is gonna be like our part two. If you want to see part one, that was our previous podcast where we talked about X Men. We're gonna be going more in depth in X Men. So if you're not caught up, spoiler alert, baby, Ooh. because this one's gonna hurt. Okay. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> It's another one I haven't been. So oh yeah, my god! I'm behind on everything. Yeah, yeah so maybe I'm you should gonna... leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I want to know, though. I want to know. The third episode, we have the Goblin Queen arc. Yeah. Which, we've talked about this. I mean, you and I have talked about this. I've talked about this with other people, which is... I'm going to say this up front. X-Men 97 isn't perfect. But what it's doing is absolutely better than anything else 
out there like it and it's just absolutely crazy because yeah some of the voice work it's not the same it's not as good uh the animation is slightly different you may not like it i love it i think it's clean and smooth and fresh and i, and I love it i will say the story pacing is a lot faster in this than it was in the previous iteration i mm. think it, to a certain extent it's too fast yes i agree and uh my my other big issue was with the whole mojo and the whole storm thing, why did they split them up when they could have just done an episode for each instead of just half an episode for each? It was such a weird thing choice to do. Well, I think so. So, so before we jump too far, this is just like you said, the Madeline Pryor, or yeah, the Madeline Pryor Goblin Queen, like that was one episode, and it easily could have been at least three episodes yeah. easily because of the way that story goes in the comics. I think what they might have done in the, in that instance is that they went, you know what, a lot of people are going to hate Cyclops because of the way this went in the comics, because that's what they, a lot of people hate Cyclops because of the comics, how that went. Mm. They're like, we're going to do it differently, and I think that's the best that they could deliver on that by going like, let's get people to not hate Cyclops like they did in the comics. Mm. So this is what we're going to do, and that's how, and, they, and it worked, I think, for what they're doing. Now, what you said, the next episode was, you had Jubilee, it's her 18th birthday, and she's like, I just want to have fun and play video games and go to an arcade, and Magneto's like, I'm not doing that, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> the new stepdad or whatever, you know, like, oh, I'm not going to lower myself to that, that's stupid, you know, and then they end up getting sucked into this thing that ends up being like a super Nintendo Sega Genesis, which we have back here, mashup. It's a Motendo. Yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But, I and, but this. then ends up looking like a Sega Genesis. It was so cool. And then the way that it plays, it plays like the X Men arcade game. And then the other games, right? Like the yeah. other game, all they essentially mashed up all the X Men games into. Then that's what the different levels are. And it was so cool. It was cool. Oh it my was gosh. so so cool. So cool. <laughs> and so what was really cool about that too is that, see, and I didn't know this at first. Uh, I noticed that Jubilee's voice was slightly different, but I was like, I don't have a problem with it. it. It sounds close enough. The original lady did an interview that I saw, and she said, yeah, they asked me to come back, but I'm a voice acting director now. I'm not a voice actor anymore. I want to give other people opportunity that are up and coming, other people that I think are ta more talented than me, because that's her job now, right? To look mm -hmm. for people that are talented for these. And she's like, I want to pass the torch, especially because I don't know, I don't, I don't think she's Asian and I think that was she didn't specifically say like hey I want it to go to an Asian person but mm -hmm. she just said like hey I think it should just go somebody that's more befitting the role than me instead of just sticking with me and so in that episode she is the old she's the old version and you so there's this passing of the torch to the next younger generation and that was a beautiful moment too how that happened of like hey we need to grow we need to move on we need to grow up it's not all bad you know and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it is going to be tough, as we know, as adults, right? Coming mm -hmm. from that, because this is, was our childhood Indeed. going to now. And it's like, yeah, but now we're trying to make the world a better place. We can do that thing. We can do that as kids, right? And yeah. so... What was so weird about it is they have that going on. And then they keep going back and forth between that and Storm. Because Storm had, spoiler alert, lost her powers. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, she was working with Forge to try to get them back mm -hmm. and so it kept going between the two stories so essentially only half the episode was jubilee and then half the episode was storm right so and then that was like episode four and then episode five was just completely like completely different and nothing to do with with storm the, with with the other episodes that was mm. like probably one of the more like shocking episodes uh. Well, it connects more with what they were building with the first yeah. two episodes and, and kind of the third, um, yeah. but definitely not the fourth. And I think the reason that they did they did that split is just to make just to make the the points in her comeback stronger, right? Because yeah. if they would if they would have done Storm's story in one episode, you would have been like, oh, she lost her powers, and it's only been gone a few episodes, and then she got it back already, and like you know, it's it's not a big deal, but. And you, then, but when you split it, you go, it feels like she's had her t her powers lost longer, even though really they weren't. They weren't, and then to make it worse is 
they're like, okay, well, all this is happening. We'll show you what else is happening. Right. And that's episode mm. five. And then they go back to six, so they did this gimmick to make it look like it was longer. Wow. Than it really than it was. was. But that moment was epic, right? Because yeah, that was... what's crazy is, so yeah, Forge, and, and once again, I feel like the, it did work better. That's straight from the comics too, right? Like that whole relationship with Forge and Storm, yeah. that's straight out of the comics. I think even him trying to get her her powers back and, and their romance, that was part of it. And same thing with that whole owl, like demon spirit thing, that was also part of the comics. So I feel like that translated really well because they split it up. If they would have done it in one episode, it would have been a really strong episode, but it also would have it wouldn't have felt as powerful in it in the way that they placed it. Because like you said, there's episode five and then episode six and then and then the way yeah, it's just the way that they played it out, it just wasn't it, it just wasn't the same, you know, it just felt like the time, right? Like the the distance between it was like, oh, there's been more time. So you felt like she had her powers gone longer than they actually were. And the so it felt like a more emotional you from moment. Feeling that way was the whole Jubilee thing. Right. Too, right. Mm -hmm. Jubilee, every time you go back to it, it keeps making you think, oh, not much time has passed. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that that's that's part of it. And so that was that story arc was really, really well done. I was really impressed with that, like from the comics. I was not expecting episode five because I do remember that in the comics. But as far as I remember that in the comics, the decimation of Genosha happens way further in the comics. Yeah. So I, I remembered Genosha, and I think I was recollecting like, hey, I don't think this ends well for Genosha, but I don't think they're going to do this now. And they did it then. Oh. And so I was not ready for that. And I was not ready for, and I don't want to spoil it for you because it is so hardcore, and those that know, know. But who they killed off and who they supposedly killed off, so, my, so emotional. My only mm. turf with who they supposedly killed off, they should have given it more time. Mm. Instead of telling us right away, oh yeah, he's still around. Huh. Oh, for that for that other character, yes. Yeah. Now, the now the other one that I'm pretty sure is dead because and going they to stay dead. If they would have kept that part out, it would have made you feel like, even though you didn't see the body of the other one, mm -hmm. that they were dead because you just saw... The first one die, right? And there's no coming back. It would reiterate it and really help surprise people more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I agree. I do agree. So, but yeah, that death, dude. So when I watched the episode, uh, I, I it was already getting spoiled for me, right? And so I was like, wife, this is priority number one for today. We have to watch this. I threw it on. My wife had just woken up. Uh, I let her sleep in, and so. She watched the episode and she was like, I was not prepared for that. I just woke up and I was like, I've been awake. I'm not emotionally prepared for that. So the way that it happened is like, yeah, it's all happy and it was great. And I think the way that it was handled, like that whole episode was handled, you know, with, with the relationship stuff, the romance stuff, was so perfectly handled. The maturity of the character that, that sacrificed himself and everything, the way he conducted himself, everything that he said... Everything that happened, the whole thing of it was just absolutely so beautiful and brilliant. I was, dude, I was bawling by the end of that episode. I oh, legit wow. was bawling. Like, Shelby, my oldest, she was like, Dad, Dad, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay? And I'm like, oh, oh, what? Okay, you know, I was just holding my face like this, though, like, at, to a nah, certain point. he was punching those tears back, he was like, I get was, back in, get back in, get back in. <laughs> the sixth day it was, I was sucking him back in, I was like, I think we can make up some of these losses in the third quarter. What was that? What was what? Oh, nothing. As soon as it was over, I stepped behind the buffet where there's the mountain of laundry baskets, and I'm like... You okay, Dad? I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm fine. Uh, nothing, nothing's wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. You know, like it was, it was bad, dude. Like I was ugly, crying, sobbing. Oh, wow. it, 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 it's, it's. Oh my god. And then, and and once again, like I hate when they do stuff like this in the middle of a season because I go. 
Tell me how you're going to top this emotionally. You, I mm. don't know how you can. I don't know how you can. But I feel like there are emo uh, there's emo other emotional moments like this, like the storm getting her powers back. That was so powerful because she, because Forge, you know, he can make anything that his mind can think of, mm. and he can make it, and that's his mutant ability. And he makes this machine to get her powers back, and. She's like, oh, it didn't work. And he's like, oh, well, I'll keep on messing with it. And then all this stuff, bad stuff happens, so he can't really focus on that. And then she has to focus on on getting him this cure to save him. And then fighting this literal demon, but also figurative demon of that it actually did heal her. She did get her powers back. Mm. She just didn't believe in herself enough to believe that she had them back. And she was kind of hoping to be human, right? Mm. And so that was... So she had to unlock it all over again. It was such mm. a beautiful, powerful moment. And then the next episode was... And what's funny about this is I don't know why people think it's this crazy thing, but they're like, oh, Cyclops up and left him and he's fine and this and that. And I'm like, the dude was dying and they healed him, like, you know, and he just hasn't gotten back because he's big, he's busy banging his chick um <laughs> so who hasn't gotten distracted you know from their friends and family with you know your your most recent you know love interest you know so but yeah and 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 that was that episode was really good that was a such a superb episode and then the rogue one is once again they have the funeral for that character oh, i almost slipped up but <laughs> and that was such an emotional like once like oh my god it hits you again and then rogue is in the angry stages and hey if you follow us if you know me you know i love captain america i mean people at work call me captain america mm -hmm. like captain america is my dude but i will say it was great seeing rogue punk captain america like that because he was totally in the wrong so <laughs> it, it, that was great that whole episode was crazy and intense and awesome and i love how they did this great thing of like building up the x-men in the first few episodes of almost being like oh they're kind of unbeatable and then they've just slowly been taking down a peg to where like nah you guys are legit like might be on the endangered species list you know what i mean like yeah. it's gonna it's crazy stuff yeah it's nuts and then the person that they brought in like supreme level threat and i'm like this is this is too this is nuts, but I also worry that it's go, it's too much too fast too mm. that they could have spread all this out over more episodes and and more seasons uh, for sure. So we'll see uh, we'll see for the finale because I think we do we have one more mm. left because I heard that it's gonna be a three episode like finale or something like that. I don't know, uh, but I know we yeah, at least have. I just wish they would have left Xavier gone for longer. I. I well, I understand why they didn't, but once again, going back to that, if they weren't rushing this, you could have left him dead, or supposedly dead, even though it's not dead. If you watch the previous season, they say it picks up where it left off. Mm -hmm. It also is confusing because, like, Cyclops is all upset, and they got the death certificate, and they're yeah. like, why Why are we going through this when we know he's not, like, the team knows he's not dead, they know but he he's been gone. By... But they know he's gone, yeah. and they don't. but they don't know that he's not fixed they don't know that he's no longer on his deathbed so they don't so they're still worried about him right so that's yeah. still there so there is kind of like a bait and switch thing going on there mm. uh but yeah I, still regardless i absolutely love it i think it is for me it's easily my most it's the most important thing for me to to watch mm. you know, right now like it's at the top of my list easily like wow. i have to watch it because of spoilers for one but also just because it's so phenomenal well when invincible was ending I'm not going to lie, Invincible was a higher priority. For you. Okay. Yeah, because right. Invincible is just very glorious. But X-Men 97 is good. Yeah, I, I The animation is growing on me. I, I convinced a guy at work, actually, because he was like, oh, I don't like it. And then I was like, dude, I kept on just talking to him, talking to him. And he was like, he got caught up. And he was like, dude, I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cried and held each other because of what we saw in episode 5. But, uh, <laughs> No, oh. <laughs> but yeah, absolute, if that doesn't say it enough, absolute strong must-see, must-stream for me. Yeah, it's a must-see, must-stream. 
I'm gonna watch it. What else is there? And it say? is for him too. I was gonna say, I, even though he doesn't watch it, I'm gonna say that it is for him too. Bad Batch has been. Uh, it's it's a slow build. It's a solid show. Like I've said throughout this podcast, I already covered other stuff in part one. This is part two. We did. Uh, there's a Fennec Shand episode that was cool because, but this is younger Fennec Shand. So oh, she. Wow, okay. This is not like reformed Fennec Shand. You know that Din Djarin has saved and that that is now hanging out with Boba Fett. This is the the hardcore, you know, B.A. Fennec Shan. I mean, not that she's not later, but I mean, I'm just, she's younger and, and obviously, yeah. So she's, it's like, can you trust her? No, no, you can't. And then they bring this other character in that we haven't seen in a while that's from Clone Wars. I'll just say that wields a lightsaber. That's all I'm going to say. And that was a pretty good, that was a solid episode. Mm -hmm. And then the 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 people they recapture the people from from the base the empire recaptures mm -hmm. um, Omega because of this M count. We know what M count is. Come on, mm -hmm. if you're a Star Wars person, you know what M count is. We know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so and then of course, but she's like she's already plotting her her when she gets there. She's oh she plots with her with uh with other people or well, there's other kids there too mm -hmm. with a high m count right so she, they're all working together and then now uh the batch the bad batch is like we need to go get her so there, she's our number one priority we got to save these kids we just have to save these other clones and that's what's happening and so it's a slow build of intensity i think there's i think they're going to do like a two episode uh finale that's what they usually do and that's mm -hmm. what we have left coming out on may the first and um yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's intense, and uh, so yeah, can't wait for the finale and what comes next. So yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, that's things. I think this would probably be better to binge. I will say that this is probably a better binge, uh, especially if you're a cheapo and you're out of the weight. But even if you're not a cheapo, I think it's probably better to binge. But I I watch it because I like it and and why not? So and I like to review it weekly. So strong. Uh, it's it's a must see for me. Um, and a must stream. I watched Rebel Moon Part 2, and this is this goes back into We Waste Our Time So You Don't Have To, because I did not want to watch this. Mm. My wife didn't want to watch this. She was not happy about me making her watch this with me <laughs> and wasting our precious time that we don't have together very much to put this on. So, this is for you. Because it's even worse than the part one. Oh, like, no. a lot of what they should have done in part one, they do in part two. And I'm like, should have done that in part... But from the get-go, you have this guy, horrible accent. His beard looks awful. His hair looks... Like, the beard looks super fake. His hair looks bad. Like, it's just everything's so bad. Uh, there was this king, and he's the guy that plays the Princess Bride, which goes into another show uh, oh. that we're going to be talking about. But anyways... Um, and, and, yeah, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, dude. But, yeah, so... It's just, it's so bad. And then, like, even, like, the, the finale or whatever that happens, like, you're like, oh, it's over. And then these other people fly in, and you're like, wait, I thought it was over. Like, it, and emotionally, you're like, oh, it's over, right? So it it was like, you can't, like, keep on when you already... It was, it's just so badly made. I don't understand how people are continuing to give this guy money to make these movies, because it's an all-original thing. Easily based off of Star Wars and huh. thank God that Kathleen Kennedy had at least enough sense to turn him down. She didn't turn down her buddy that made The Last Jedi, which well, I will say is not the worst Star Wars movie, but it wasn't it's the best well, yeah, it wasn't well the best well, movie to put in the middle of a trilogy mm -hmm. the way that it, it worked. That's all I have to say. I, I would have loved to see a, him do an entire trilogy on his own or or the other guy do an entire trilogy on their own or both like that would have been fine with me but the way that they did it nightmare anyways this is a worse nightmare like this is <laughs> this is it's just it's it's awful I, I and it's it's sad because i've heard so many interviews like with the actors and even the, even the director and people that work for him and i'm like these are good actors and these are like this is and, and there's good elements. Like, everything is there that makes me think, they like, want this to be a great thing, but then ends up being garbage just oh, because they'll follow through and just, like, it's just, it just ends up... It just ends up being bad. It, 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 is, it is a pass. Don't even watch the trailer to it. You're still wasting your time. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely pass. Did you guys watch Knuckles? Oh, no. I haven't had a chance to I, yet. No. <laughs> I sadly didn't even watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 
So I had to. So, what? So, you gotta fix yourself. So <laughs> I. <laughs> so what I ended up having to do that. was I had to watch Sonic the Hedgehog oh, 2. No, you don't. Which I, I watched and I was like, wow, this is actually a really good movie. Yeah. Why didn't I watch it? Yes. <laughs> like, it, was it is good. Really it's solid. Good. And the way they portrayed Knuckles was just so good. I oh, was like, yeah. No wonder why they did a Knuckles series because he just. They, I feel like they portrayed him and voiced him better in the movie than they do in the games. Mm. Because uh, Knuckles tries to sound badass in the games, but really he's not. Mm. I like the whole idea of he's a muscle head. Because that, <laughs> like yes. the voice of a muscle head, because that fits oh, better. Idris Elba does such a character. good job with the voice. Oh god, yes. oh my yeah. Gosh, just such great. a good combination where, yeah, if you haven't watched it, it's worth watching. It's really good. And of course, you get the cheesy, kiddish Tells voice, which you just kind of learn to deal with when you're on Sonic. <laughs> but, but the Sonic, but like Sonic was good, and then uh, they hinted at the end with uh, with Keanu Reeves' character in the third one. I'll just put it that way: Keanu Reeves' character. Oh, I can't wait! I can't it wait. should be good. It's gonna be interesting. We're actually gonna get to like besides Sega Genesis games, a Sonic game. With a good plot. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic Adventure. No. Oh. But Sonic Adventure 2. Yes. <laughs> it actually has like a good viable plot. But I feel like they need to get the rights to some DBZ music. And they can keep it the same final battles before. <laughs> because it literally like if you play the end of Sonic Adventure 2. It literally looks like a Super Saiyan uh, Sonic and a Super Saiyan Shadow fighting the final boss. <laughs> nice. on the comms helping you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> because yeah, it gets so messed up that even Eggman's like, ah shit, we're screwed. <laughs> okay, what can I do for you, Sonic? Because <laughs> I would rather live than not live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, like you said, uh, Keanu Reeves, they, they put it out, it's out there, the news is that Keanu Reeves is going to be playing Shadow in Sonic 3. So. Good voice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, it's, and so the, the, the Knuckles series it's on Paramount Plus. I'm gonna say this up front. Paramount Plus to me is the worst app that I've ever used. It's it, it's it's awful. But going forward from that, like this is a solid series. It's six episodes. It kind of just feels like a long movie. It feels like they filmed it and they're like, well, we don't want to cut any of the footage. Let's just turn it into a series instead of a movie because it could have been like, it could have been its own movie really. But like, yeah, it played out pretty good through. Uh, as a series and then works in that same story so the the sheriff or deputy or whatever that's in that he essentially because Knuckles is like I don't have anything to do now and he ends up becoming like training that deputy to become like a warrior and it's <laughs> because, because what do the greatest warriors do and how do they keep themselves sharp is they train, train people, people right they teach that's what they end up doing is when they reach that level and they go what what's left Oh, I'll train other people. And so it works for both of them. It's this great relationship. I like that they just like brought everyone back from the movie yeah. for the show. Because that was one thing I was worried about. Then I started watching the trailers after watching Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with that fresh in my mind. I was like, oh, wow. wow well done. Okay. I'm yeah, yeah I was now. impressed. I thought it was going to be cheap because cheaply done because it's a series. Mm -hmm. No, it keeps that same quality of the movies. And uh, they have, like, the mom is Rizzo from, you know, Greece. As, the, as she's the mom of, of, 
of that deputy wow. and stuff. And then the, her, his dad is once again the guy that that's from Princess Bride, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. That dude. Uh, oh, Carrie Ellis. Carrie Ellis. So yeah. he's so he's great. Mm. So it's and then they even have uh, what's his name from Game of Thrones, a uh, dog, and he's the main villain, and he used to work for uh, Eggman, and so he makes his own mech. To fight against Knuckles, it's awesome. It's way awesomer wow. than I thought it would be or or should be, and it's not like the the greatest, absolutely greatest thing. Like it's cheesy, it can be dumb, but the kids watched it, they enjoyed it. We all had a good time watching it, so it was a pretty easy watch and like binge in one day. Oh, cool. So I I won't say that it's like an absolutely must see, but it's most definitely worth checking out for sure. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine it would have to be cheesy. I mean, come on. Sonic the Hitchhog 1 and 2 had, like, yeah. 90s Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. And so. I loved every minute of the Jim Carrey on there. Jim Carrey pretty much retired now, which is good, because some of his later stuff was kind of weird. But, <laughs> but his uh, Sonic the Hedgehog portrayal of Dr. Robotnik, he can keep that coming all day long. Yeah. Agreed. It's Absolutely. so wonderful and perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Let's move on to Star Trek Discovery, which I actually didn't think we would get to this, but I did watch the first episode of Star, Dis Star Trek Discovery, final season, season five. So I, I liked what I saw. Uh, I love uh, I love the main chick. What's her name? Sasha or something like that? Uh, Michael. Oh, yeah, that always weirds me out that, that she has a dude. No, I'm but like the name. actual actress, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the actual name, her, the character, her name's Michael, and I'm like, I, that's weird. That that's so weird. And then the, la the fact she has the last name Burnham is weird too. Yeah. Mm. Because you know who her adopted parents are literally? No. Spock's parents. Oh. Like, wow. Okay. Not even like, not even like partially like step. No, no. Like literally, Damn, adopted wow. parents are Spock's parents. That's amazing. Okay. And I mean, that, that's what I mean. I'm wearing a shirt. And I don't, I mean, I don't know. That, that. That's what I mean as Spock's sister. <laughs> that, that's incredible. That, now you know why I'm like, why would everyone just, like, forget someone? Right, yeah. It, Dear gracious. Like, that's Spock's sister. You watch Star Trek movies and emotional things happen. It would come out. It would come yeah. out. It, when your life is on the line. Well, it's future stuff. Like, it's hard to, like, retcon that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you're moving forward, you know, so... I'm yeah, like, well, that's why, why they threw them in the future. That's why so suspension could... of, uh... Of what? Belief or whatever? Disbelief? I don't know. Maybe Anyways, not. so... But, yeah, uh... Yeah. I will say, like, because I watched the first season. I started the second season. And so, now I just jumped into the fifth season. So, I was feeling kind of lost. But a lot of the... So, I go, like, oh, a lot of these characters are further along, you know... Mm -hmm. They've moved up, well, they've changed. literally, like, thousands of years into the future. Yeah. It, it's complete. The tech, it looks different from uh, the other ones. Uh, you got Starfleet's completely different. Like, uh, in, in the final season, Earth finally joins Starfleet. Because Earth wasn't a member of Starfleet in the future. Wow. When the Great Burn happened, they're like, screw you guys, we got our own plan to worry about. Mm. And left. Wow. And uh, Vulcans are somewhat part of it because uh, they made this up with Spock. Spock uh, brokered peace between the Vulcans and the Romulans. Oh, wow. Okay, and uh, when the Romulan planet overloaded and destroyed, mm -hmm. they actually just all went to Vulcan. They, they became their ancestral name, the Navar. Oh, okay. They call themselves the Navar, and so. Navar wasn't a member of the Starfleet as well, and they joined mm. back later. Interesting. And wow. they chose to do that with the help of Burnham, because she's Vulcan, so she could at least relate to the Vulcan part of Navar. Okay. But it's kind of interesting, because you got, like, Vulcans all about logic, and then you got, like, very emotional Romulan mm -hmm. part part of the factions as well and that's Navar and they're part of the part of Starfleet now and the Vulcan lady that you see that Saru's interested in oh yeah she's the president of Navar oh okay okay and that's why she's involved so much there because 
She's their diplomat for Navarre, mm. which is the Vulcans and the Romulans. Okay. Dang. All right, cool. More big swings in that case, then. I think yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from what I saw, like, like I said, it was really interesting. I just saw the first episode. I had a good time. It's really fast-paced. But, obviously, I, it does reference previous seasons which I haven't watched, so I did feel lost. Uh, that's... A, Good. That's a pro and a con at the same time, right? Because you don't you don't want to leave the previous seasons behind, but you don't want to make people feel too lost when you're rolling into a new season. So I did feel a little too lost, but I think obviously if I watch more, I'll I'll get caught up. I would just watch the previous stuff and then come back. Oh, okay. It's just gonna. There's just a lot that there's goes too on. much. But mm, <laughs> like you, okay. you gotta know about the burn. So basically. The reason why Starfleet was in shambles when they got there was because the fuel for like all the starships of like multiple races they've all come down to the same fuel source. Right. I well, thought I heard that fuel like that. source just catches on fire and starts burning. You got some real problems going on. Jeez, man. And that's called the Great Burn. Oh, okay. And so they, so they have a se season where they're trying to deal with just figuring out what their place is in the future mm. and then they find out how the great burn happened and then they all then there's this mysterious anomaly that keeps destroying planets and other entities Jeez. and they're trying and they had to figure that out that was the latest season and then it's this one okay well then yeah it's a, a lot happens yeah, it's not it's not too bad. Uh, the only thing I really kind of my big issue with Discovery from the beginning is it, it's it's a good story, but it doesn't feel Star Trek. Okay, mm -hmm. it just never really feels like Star Trek because it's too fast paced and too action based, or no, just like the whole story arc and how oh, okay. the characters are just don't feel Star Trek. Because if you watch like Star, like the Starfleet you see in there. Like, I'm not talking about J.J. Abrams' Starfleet. I'm talking about, <laughs> like, uh, the original movies. It just doesn't feel right. Like, even the whole Roka thing was a good twist. But it didn't really feel like it fit with the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And plus, I kind of like I like the Star Trek movies way of the Klingon and Starfleet getting along better. Mm -hmm. Where... It's just two people, two allies who, like, don't want to bother killing each other. So they just kind of do a very loose armistice where it's <laughs> like, we won't kill you if you don't kill you. <laughs> because uh, even even in Deep Space Nine, like, the Klingons are not part of Starfleet. Indeed, yeah. They are not. But as more conflicts go on, the more they're like, well... Starfleet's not bad. We deal with them all the time. We'd rather deal with a potential enemy we know versus enemies we don't know, and that just gets them closer till they become like drinking buddies in mm -hmm. uh, Deep Space Nine. Pass the gag. <laughs> uh. <laughs> which which uh, Deep Space Nine is phenomenal. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Like this series that got me into Star Trek. Um, but yeah, yeah, Discovery, you just don't really get the the same feel of Starfleet. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I loved the first season. Uh, I, I obviously wasn't in love with the second season, so I didn't keep watching it. But uh, this season, from just the first episode that I saw, I my grade, I'm going to give it a... It's worth checking out. Mm. Yeah, check it out if you have time. Okay. Yeah, I it's not the top priority, obviously. I, I wouldn't really put that as a top priority. If you really want to watch Star Trek... Yeah, if you want to watch Star Trek. If you really want to watch Star Trek, I recommend watching yeah, shows. Star Trek, the movies, two through uh But, I mean, four, if they want new stuff. And then mm -hmm. six. If they want new stuff, what that's that? What, that Brave, what I Brave New Worlds or Strange Worlds or whatever. Worlds, Strange yeah. New Worlds. The first season was pretty good. I still need to watch the second season... It was solid, but, like, the weakest part is of Strange New Worlds is it relies very heavily on Discovery. Oh, okay. Because uh, when you watch Season 2 of Discovery, you got Captain Pike there, 
And it basically continues after what you see at the end of season two okay. of Discovery is where that starts off and it's him dealing with what he knows, which I felt like was just really weird because everyone knows what happened. Like, Captain Pike, it's known what happened to him because he watched the pilot episode of Star Trek, like the original Star Trek series, and it tells you the fate of Captain Pike mm -hmm. in that episode, but they just keep a... They're trying to do a throwback, and so it works, but at the same time, it it's just kind of takes away from the rest of the storytelling. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I would still, like, for season one of the of Strange Worlds, I would give it a watch. Okay. But yeah, we'll we'll tell you how season two is once we get to it. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we have our merch that we're sporting. Uh, I have the Fallout stuff, which might be going away off the site after this month because we're going to be reducing our site to only 100 products. So this is probably going to be going away because it's merch of the month. After that, it's, it might be going away completely. I mean, if you still want it, We'll, we'll find a way to get it to you. We can make that happen, but it's not going to be on sale because this is the only time that it's going to be on sale with free shipping. By Grabthar's Hammer. What a saving. Uh, which is the... It's the vats, and then it says... So you're telling me there's a chance, like from Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> from that meme. Uh, so I love it. And there's all kinds of shirts. This is the tank top, and this is a small, which works for me. And then I also have the X-Men hoodie, uh, which I love, and, and it's so great. It's not too heavy. Um, this is a medium, and uh, it, fits, it fits pretty good. Um, and then, of course, I have, the, I have these Ninja Turtle shorts, and then I got my, um, my Mortal Kombat socks, which I don't even know if we're going to... We're probably going to get rid of a lot, a lot of stuff. Like I said, we have to reduce our store a lot, so... It's, it's a lot of this stuff is going away, but if you want it, hit us up for it. And we'll, I'll even hook people up with codes if they, if they want. Just, like discount just codes. message us. But yeah, just message let us. Let us know and we can, we can find a way to make it available for you to purchase it. Yeah. It's yeah. not a problem at all. I'm rocking my uh, Talk Nerdy to Me Ninja Turtles shirt. Probably one of our best shirts we have here. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just awesome. <laughs> and yes, that is Star Trek font right there. And I adore it. It makes me happy. Yes, so, and we yeah. have other ones. <laughs> I have, there's another one that says live long and prosper. There's also another one that has the uh, Spock quote that he says to, uh, to Kirk when he's dying. Um, so, uh, yeah. But I almost felt like maybe we should have gotten him the, the shirt or be like, you know what, you guys switch shirts. You know, like, because this guy's spitting the, but this is the ambassador. That's why he, he has the nerd knowledge. That's why we call him the ambassador. My so, parents are Trekkies. He's so, he knows this stuff. So, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's how I know. My parents are Trekkies. So you just have to know that kind of stuff. Growing up in a Trekkie household. Mm. So, but yeah, uh, and once again, you know, we're going to do the shout-outs. Shout-outs always to Atticus as our number one shout-out. And then uh, we have Amerame Media, as well as others. M M uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde makes uh, comics. They're phenomenal. I love their inspirational posts. And, uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have, don't we have another one that... Oh, yeah. Uh, we're... Still working on getting a collaboration with them, but the horror fiend. I was talking to one of the main guys that runs it, and uh, yeah, they 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 do mostly like horror movie type of stuff, and then they're gonna do a nerdy nerdy uh, channel as well. So it's great to see them joining that. Uh, uh, one of one of the guys that's heading it, he, he used to work at a comic book shop, so I think uh, he's going to have a really good perspective on nerdy things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, remember, I, see, I feel like I see him at all the cons, too, or I usually see him at the cons. So. Well, for New Mexico Comic Expo, he was head of security. For oh, okay. Life. There you go. That's, that's why. There we go, wow. <laughs> so, all right, cool. I did fail to mention, too, that 5% of our profit goes to a charity of the month. We have a different charity of the month for the month, every single month. Uh, for 
Abril, it is Autism Speaks. And then for Mayo, it's going to be National... Uh, it's the the it's NAMI is what it is, but it's it's mental because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. It's related to that, so that's what we're going to be uh, donating to for next month. So uh, I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, that is. All right, cool. So talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it real. Keep it nerdy, man. <laughs>